Innocent church, you have to understand these three things when you read your Bible. You have to understand inspiration. You have to understand revelation. And that inspiration and revelation was designed for your illumination. Now, my mama told me in every big word, there's a little word. And in the big word, illumination is the little word, light. And God's trying to turn on the light. Because you need light to know where you go. Men walk in darkness, don't know where they go. And so when God inspires men uh, to receive his revelation, it is designed to turn on the light of our understanding. But that's why Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning verse 18, he said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye might know what is the hope of his calling. Yes. The Bible said, I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding be open, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Let me tell somebody tonight, if you're going to deal with God, you better get in the light. Yes. Everything you got to do with God is in the light. Yes. His children are children of light. Yes. The gospel is the gospel of light. Yes. This is a kingdom of light. Yes. Fellowship with God is in the light. Yes. Anything about God is going to be in the light. God does not walk in darkness. God does not fellowship in darkness. God don't deal in darkness. The gospel is a gospel of light. The gospel of light makes children of light and children of light fellowship with the God who's in the light. So everything is in the light. So inspiration and uh, revelation is for our illumination so that we can understand some stuff that God is trying to tell us. Somebody here tonight needs to listen to God. Somebody here tonight needs to listen to God. And so I'm Paul, that's who's speaking. And I receive revelation. And my revelation is that you might understand my knowledge in the mystery. I'm, I'm talking to you so you can understand my knowledge in the mystery. I want to talk to you about the mystery. I got to tell you about the mystery. Praise God, Paul wanted to teach about the mystery. Brother Shabazz want to tell you tonight about the mystery. But now hold on. The word mystery is used 22 different times in the New Testament Bible. And the only way you can determine what mystery is under consideration is by the context in which the mystery is talked about. Yes, Amen. Because there are different mysteries talked about in different places in the Bible. So don't go crazy with the word mystery. Don't go home and get no Thompson chain reference and start running the word mystery and start thinking that all of them are the same mystery. Because they are not all the same mystery. There is a specific mystery under consideration in this content. Now, the third thing I need to tell you tonight is understand what a mystery is. Well, all right, all right. A mystery, according to this text, is that which had not been revealed in the fullness okay, in which it's being revealed now. Well, it doesn't mean that they didn't know it. It means that they didn't know it like they know it now. Yeah, y'all ain't saying nothing. You see, the prophets gave a little bit. Then the prophets gave a little bit more. And then the apostles got a little bit more. Are y'all following me? And so as time went on, uh, the mystery becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. It doesn't refer to something can't nobody know. It refers to that which had not been made known to the extent that it is now made known. And so Paul said, I want to tell you about my knowledge in the mystery. So Paul's getting ready to add 
Testament writers can give. Right. He's getting ready to illuminate yeah. in a way that the writers before did not illuminate. Right. He's going to tell us about this mystery. Somebody say he's talking about a mystery. Talking about a mystery. Now, now watch it. Watch it now. Watch it now. He says, which in other ages was not made known unto the Son of Men, uh, and it is now revealed. Do y'all see that? Yeah. Uh, it was made known before, but not like it is now. Now, the mystery is going to be clearer. And it is now revealed unto the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now, he, he uses a progression. He says, I, Paul, want to tell you about the mystery. And then in verse 3, he says, I want to tell you about the mystery of Christ. So now I know Paul is talking about the mystery and the mystery that Paul is talking about is the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is the same as the mystery that I, Paul, am talking about. I, Paul, go tell you about the mystery and if you want some more clarity, it is the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is the mystery that I, Paul, want to tell you about. I want to tell you my knowledge about but he goes one step further and says it is the mystery of Christ. Yes. Now he keeps on in his progression and he says here's the mystery. Here's the mystery. Here's the mystery. Verse 6 tells us what the mystery is. That the Gentiles should be fellow and of the same body. Somebody say same body. And partakers of his promise in the in Christ by the gospel. Now brethren, that is the mystery. The mystery is that Jew and Gentile come together in the same body. Black folk, white folk, rich folk, poor folk, city folk, country folk, educated folk, uneducated folk, Same way. 
you shouldn't go to college. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a degree. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a great life. I'm not saying you should not have a great career. What I'm saying to you is simply this. Your mission in life is to be saved. That's your mission. Your mission in life is to save your soul. Not your house. Your soul. Not your car. Your soul. Not your education. Your soul. Not your children. Right. Your soul. Yeah. The most important thing you have to save is your soul. Yeah. And if you don't save your soul, all that other junk, stuff, and things ain't about, that's why I said it ain't about nothing. Ain't about nothing. It ain't about nothing. Because you have to understand God's eternal purpose. Here was God's eternal purpose, which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. God's eternal purpose is that the day would come when there would be no longer a separation between the Jew and the Gentile, but that they would all be saved in the same body. And according to the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 25, the body is the same thing as the church, which is talked about in Matthew chapter 16, 13 to 18. The church is the same thing as the body, and the body is the same thing as the church, and the church and the body is the same thing. Functionality. Yeah. There are many members. Yeah. 